So, uh, as Colin mentioned, I'm going to, to, to talk a little bit more about OPOL because I think, uh, although it's an acronym that's very familiar to the industry, a lot of people don't really understand uh, quite how it works. And it was set up uh, as long ago as 1975. It was originally intended to be a temporary scheme, but because it provides such an effective solution, it's become a, a permanent one. And it applies to all offshore facilities from which there might be a spill, uh, it doesn't apply to oil tankers, they have a separate uh, liability convention. And what it does is it provides a strict liability compensation scheme. That means if you apply to the, uh, uh, through the OPOL system, you do not need to prove any failure of reasonable care on the part of the operator. As long as the operator's oil was responsible for your damage, then you can claim. And because you don't have to go through any legal procedure, you don't have to prove fault, the intention is that this should provide a very rapid response uh, to uh, harm. And it's also secure. Uh, members of OPOL have to provide evidence that they have the resources to meet claims up to the OPOL limit. But if for any reason an OPOL member failed to meet those claims, then all of the other members of the industry are effectively backing up that undertaking to pay. And I don't think there are very many industries where every industry member effectively promises to pay for the damage caused by another one of their members. OPOL covers two main areas of claims. The first are uh, remedial or cleanup measures. So any reasonable measures taken to prevent or mitigate or eliminate pollution damage following an oil spill and that could be onshore or offshore, or the disposal of, of recovered oil, and claims can be made by uh, public authorities uh, for that. This wouldn't cover claims by, by um, uh, private individuals. Uh, by contrast, in relation to pollution damage, that's damage to property or any other uh, losses which result directly from the contamination, that uh, area of claim is open to anybody. And as long as the claim is, is, is reasonable and can be quantified, uh, uh, it will uh, fall within the OPOL scheme. And that means that potentially uh, the uh, negligence limit, uh, uh, the, the, the rule that would prevent claims for pure economic loss, would not apply in relation to claims under the OPOL scheme, although clearly if there was a major incident, there would have to be some decision as to where you drew the line in terms of what claims you would meet. This is a, an issue which was also, uh, uh, has also been very much to the fore in relation to the Macondo incident and the management of claims under that. The European Commission had not prior to Macondo, I think, given a great deal of attention to the oil industry, but uh, that changed quite markedly during the course of 2010 and resulted ultimately in the uh, Commission communication of October of that year on uh, facing the challenge of the safety of offshore oil and gas activities, uh, a communication which made a very uh, a large series of suggestions as to work that the European Commission thought it could usefully do in improving the regulation of uh, oil and gas uh, uh, activities throughout Europe. Um, including in particular strengthening environmental legislation in relation to pollution control uh, and accident prevention, and proposing amendments to the Environmental Liability Directive. I mentioned earlier that currently that only applies uh, in territorial waters, uh, and that's the area within 12 miles of uh, the coast. The suggestion is that that might be extended to cover all marine waters. And also, they would at, that, uh, at the same time consider whether there should be a requirement for some mandatory financial security or insurance in relation to liabilities under the directive. Um, uh, there were a number of other uh, uh, issues raised. One of the more interesting ones was that EU headquartered operators uh, should be obliged to apply a uniform set of offshore safety and environmental policies in their operations throughout the world. Um, very recently, the European Parliament um, has uh, uh, produced its own report, which uh, also urged uh, a review of uh, insurance and liabilities provisions. And clearly the concern here in the UK has been that 
um, anything that's done at the European level should not undermine the very good regulatory regime that we think we've established here in the UK and in any way conflict with, in particular, the, the, the goal-setting uh, regime in relation to health and safety, which, which we think has been so effective uh, and which indeed, to some extent, has now been borrowed uh, uh, from us by, by the US.